All right, I'm gonna go over this fast. I'm gonna go over this concisely. First, we're gonna talk about why I use wide shell and what you should do if you have a wide shell in Gunlings. Very simple, really. Wide shell means your shells do the most damage when uncharged. There's very little benefit to charging them and using full burst is actually a waste of your time. But, and when I mash B, it makes me do a warp stake cannon. How could I get around this issue? Well, I will tell you, kind sir. When you are playing Wide Gun Lance, your goal is to do this, and only this. Poke shell. If you're out of line, sidestep, backstep, poke shell. If you run out, quick reload. Poke shell, poke shell, poke shell. You need to reposition, sidestep, poke shell. Wrong, sidestep, poke shell, reload. Always quick reload, always poke shell. No deviation from this plan, hardly ever. Now, if you'd like to know why, it's really very simple. The delay between shelling, one, two, is about the same delay between poking, but by doing this, you essentially double your damage. Also, if you observe, I'll do this for the benefit of argument, shell, shell, quick reload, shell, shell, quick reload, you will quickly move out of range of your target, and even a slight deviation from poke shell, such as bunch poke, poke shell, shell, will not only cause you to do worm stick cannon, which you didn't want, but something as simple as shell, poke shell, shell, quick reload, shell, poke shell, shell, quick reload. A very similar infinite, not quite enough pokes, you still gradually move backwards. The only way to maintain distance, and obviously, as I've said before, to do optimal damage, is poke shell, poke shell, poke shell. No, no counter argument for wide gun lance. If you find that boring and you like to do the awesome slam into full burst infinite, uh, you should use one of the normal four gun lances. You can do this infinite all day. If you slam and you have a normal gun lance, you can get full bursts out of it. It's fun, it's cool, it's a very viable playstyle. Don't do it with wide gun lance. It doesn't work. I mean, it works, but not to the degree you wish it did. You do this. Now, what if the monster is doing something crazy and you're missing your shells? Oh no, especially a monster that flies. Well, there's three angles you can shell at. The second is to do the lunging poke, which transitions into up stabs, and then you can shell poke with up stabs. You can also block and push Y to do that. Do note, those stabs have a lower motion value than horizontal stabs. It's the opposite of regular weights. This is higher damage than this. If the target is really up in the air or you're trying to hit Nergi's wings or something, you can do up thrust into this to shell directly upward. The motion value on that upswing is not very good, the animation time is long, and it's overall the least efficient of all three of the ones I just showed you. Only do it if you literally can't reach the monster. That's it. Things like Worm Stake Cannon and, uh, and Wyvern Fire, they're fun, but they don't actually increase your DPS at all. They should only be used when you know your window of vulnerability is about to end and you're trying to get some burst damage in or get a stagger. They look cool. They're very anime. I'm sorry. Do not do them under normal circumstances because if a monster never moves and you're just sitting there trying to DPS race your teammates, what I'm doing right now will make you win. It's not glamorous. It, you could even make the argument that it's not fun, and I might, I might not disagree with you, but to me it's very fun. That is your objective. You spend the entire hunt looking for a situation to do that. Now, let's go over, now that I've discussed that, let's go over my build. So, you'll see here, the things I'm going to prioritize, as in most Gunlance builds, are Artillery 3. You have to get it. If you don't have three Artillery decorations, and spoiler alert, I don't, you will have to use the Artillery Charm. There is a waste piece that'll give you two, and you can fill in with one gem, but it's Dodogamas, it's very bad. You'll have much better luck with the Artillery Charm 3, until you get three Artillery Gems. I do have a Capacity Gem, thank god, which means I do not need to bastardize the build even more. Those are the core Gunlance skills, but the third core skill that people don't discuss is Protective Polish. 
Without protective polish, no matter what gun lance you use, you'll never be very effective, because shelling simply murders sharpness way too quickly. Long gun lance is affected the least by that weakness, normal gun lance is affected the most, because full burst completely destroys sharpness. Or in my case, it does nothing, because I have protective polish. For people who like wide gun lance like me, you may look at this video and see the basal gun lance and ask, why don't I use the water gun lance? Well, kind sir, that is actually very simple and I'm glad to go over it. The water gun lance and the basal gun lance both have wide four shells. However, the water gun lance requires you to fit in non-elemental to take full advantage of it, which you can do because it has a bonus slot here and you can put the non-elemental gem right there without changing the build. But it also hits white sharpness and to use it at full effectiveness you need a bunch of handicraft. The only effective way to get a lot of handicraft without bastardizing your build is to use the handicraft charm. I'll go into this, but I don't really think I need to because handicraft, each level of handicraft is a three slot. Each level of something like artillery is a one slot. So that makes this charm the equivalent of like nine slots worth. You know, it's basically completely insane. Uh, the opportunity cost of using this saves the rest of your build so much. Unfortunately, I cannot do a build like that, because now I don't have Artillery 3, so I need to set in Artillery Decorations, and I only have 2. No matter what I do here, I will not be able to make up the difference. So unless you have 3 Artillery Decorations, and a Capacity, and a Protective Polish all ready to go, you should not be using that gun lance. Stick with the Basil one. And to add insult to injury, the Basil one has <clears throat> nice, comfy 2 augments compared to 1, which, you know, helps make up the difference even more. Cool. Awesome. Great. So, what are we going to do now? Well, there's one other thing that's really important to these builds, and that is food skills. <laughs> you desperately want to have the Gunlance boosting food skill, Bombarder. Which means if you don't have vouchers, I'm about to teach you something no guide seems to go over and no one really seems to get it, which is how to optimize RNG for food skills. I'll transition from that right into a practice hunt, and you'll be able to see this in action. People skip hunt prep a lot. <clears throat> it does no one any good. And I'm not going to tell you to make a custom platter because that defeats the purpose of the lesson I'm about to teach you. So right here, when you pay with whatever, and you go here, your goal is to get four of six from the bottom row. If you've never looked at food skills and you always use custom platters or god forbid chef's choice, this is an important lesson for you. Feline my martyr and boost, boosts gun lance damage. It requires four from that row. However, if you don't use fresh ingredients, your chance of getting it is abysmal. So your real goal, if you could, is to get four meats, the way you boost attack as well as that. Your secondary goal, <coughs> this is actually a spectacular example, is to get as many fresh ingredients as possible. So here, watch this. One fresh, too fresh. But now I'm going to get feline pyro. Blank out. The ultimate way to get the food skill you want is to not care about what buff you're getting. I know it's sacrilege. You might have to just get elemental resistance when you don't need it. Get as many fresh ingredients as possible from this row. That's step one. Step two, fill in the rest you didn't get with the remainder to get a good food buff. So in this case, I'm going to pick meat, right? And then step three is fill the rest with fresh ingredients. So, if I take this, I'll get elemental resistance, but I don't really care. I'd rather have attack even if the buff is bastardized. So I'm going to take one fresh here, notice the activation chance goes up, one more here. Now I have a two star activation chance, I'll get feline bombarder, and I've only sacrificed a portion of the buff. I'm not getting defense or elemental resistance. This is what I would consider an optimal chance of getting what I want. I make decisions like this every time I look at the ingredients and I speed through them. And as you notice, I just got Feline Bombarder and Feline Polisher. It is that easy. If any of that confused you, um, sit down with the ingredients, memorize the tables of which ingredients do what. You know, it is, <clears throat> it is a lot to take in. I know why people don't know it, but learning it significantly helps you. There's also the option of farm 200 meal vouchers and just <laughs> Just use a voucher every time to make sure you get feline bombarded. I will not mock someone for doing that. It's a solid strategy. I don't want anyone coming in, even by chance, messing this up. 
Now, we're gonna do a practice hunt, and I'm gonna show you all those Gunlance <coughs> tips and tricks in action. <laughs> do note, I did not mention it, but in my build, I probably should have covered this. I have guard three. You don't need any level of guard skill to play Gunlance, but depending on how much you like blocking, the thresholds you're gonna shoot for are either guard three or guard five. Guard three is very sufficient. Guard five is overkill, but it is super high. I'm going through my usual round of buffs, even though Nergigante is not a threat. <coughs> Only to show you guys. Always try to start with Evasion Mantle, especially when you're soloing, and dodge the first roar to get the damage buff. Just an overall efficient way to start every hunt. I go for a slam on the horn to start, because I like the damage it gives me. And then I go right into poke shot. When solo and Nergi, your objective is to only hit him in the head. Oops, I messed up my sidestep there. Only in the head and in the arms. You don't want to cause extra spikes to grow like I did there. So now I have to try to pick his wing as well, which is inconvenient. You have a lot of time to block very comfortably with Gunlance. Alright, I was able to break one of the horns. Now I'm gonna go for his wing spikes. Ah, I wanted them to be weakened, but not quite broken, so I could break them as he got up to trade another stagger. It did a little too much damage and failed, but the logic of fighting Nervi is weaken all the spikes while he's down, then hit them when he comes up to chain staggers. I will full work here just to capitalize on the window of vulnerability. <sighs> Worm stakes slightly off target. That would have easily chained into a stagger. Yep, called it. Now I'm going to try to break his arm right as he gets up. <sighs> nice. Roar. Ooh, I did not block that man. I think I was too close and not facing the correct direction. Big whiff. Huge opportunity of damage wasted. And he's straight running from me, which is not spectacular. I'll just let Temporal dodge that and then I'll shark him real quick. <sighs> Painful whiff. Really, really awful whiffs. Definitely losing a lot of DPS here. I'll block this one, just so I have more time to hit him. Note how I'm targeting the parts. Oh man, if I had realized what I was going for there earlier and got the worm stake, it's possible that would have staggered him. <coughs> That's unfortunate, so he's going to get away. There's no real point flash bombing him here because there's something else I can teach you guys real quick, which is it's fun, but don't wake up monsters with, um, with Wyvern Fire. Wyvern Fire is multiple explosions, and unfortunately only one of them will get the bonus damage. That means the optimal move to wake a monster up with is the one with the highest motion value, just like with any weapon, like with Great Sword. And in this case, that move is actually the side sweep. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to whiff to the right like this, and then I'm going to slam and hit Nergi with the right hitbox of the side sweep. If you're curious how this works, it looks something like this. 
Just like that. See the 389? That was that hit. And that's how you fight your Gigante. That's basically how you gun lance. <clears throat> I tried to play-by-play play what I was going for and the mistakes I made. Um, in my personal opinion, when you have Guard 3 on this weapon, several Elder Dragons are completely free. The ability to block pretty leniently after stuff that looks very vulnerable, like that part of the fight where I reloaded and was still able to block before the attack came down, extremely helpful. <coughs> Very free, quite easy to block and punish. You can play a lot slower and more defensively than I did and have a very easy time farming him. But it's more fun to aggressively go for all the part breaks. Come on, guys, you know it is. That's really all I have to say about Gunlance. Always finish videos by prancing. <laughs>